This is something different. It's not a Tennessee Walker, obviously. This is a client's a gypsy banner that we're going to be training here. And looks like he's, I was, I was uh, not here for the first 30 minutes and he put him in a, a halter and a lead rope and disengaged his hind end and some stuff like that. But as you can hear, we got uh, skid steers running in the background and everything. So it's kind of a distracting sort of environment, but that's kind of good too. And uh, anyhow, you can see how he's hooked on to him. Seems pretty darn laid back, doesn't he? Yeah. Seems that way. He's a pretty horse. Handsome. Like that long mane and everything. Yeah. He's stocky built. See that disengage the hind end there. Yeah. So he's just kind of getting used to, you know, he just was, he was just uh, brought here yesterday. So, you know, you just, you, you, you want to, you want to instill in him right off the bat that it's a good place. And I'm not, when I say that, I don't mean walking all over you or anything, but I mean, just that, you know, that's, that he's got friends here and stuff. That's how I like to think about it. So this kind of stuff, every time he steps off and he follows him, he'll pat him a little bit. So you see he's getting used to his tools. You know, you don't want them to be terrified of anything that you're using. You know, in this case it's a flag, and that's a good thing. Like, see how he's just going around, seeing if there's any, if there's any spots on his body that he says no. So instead of pulling his head over, try to just get him to come over on his own. See, he's blocking me here. What's that? He's blocking me. Yeah. I'm wanting to. He's blocking you on the right side? His right. Yeah. They'll do that a lot. Horses will. Like I have that one video, it's called right side wrong side that's a really good one to watch it hasn't got a lot of views yet but it's uh, i think it's merlin in there and he did not want him on one of his sides and that's why i came with that right side wrong side and, uh, i had to work him through that and it's something you have to kind of continually do a little bit They're moving panels and everything. So. See how you just you just collect a little bit there. Yeah. See, you put me back in the left there. Working with them at Liberty like this is, is a really good way to start. We, uh, we get that, uh, you get buy-in on it, you know, and you can kind of see where their thoughts yeah. are. See, this is my way there. <laughs> His forelock's so long, maybe he hadn't seen anybody in a while. <laughs> He's a cutie. See that? So, 
can come over. Now I'll use that to get that back in to move over the flags and good. Good. And if you notice like when we use the flags and stuff and it doesn't have one like a, like if it's a volume like if the pressure is a volume control it doesn't it's not stuck on one volume we go from one to a hundred or zero to a hundred back down all the time i always say that you should if you want a picture like this what he's doing there that's putting pressure on that horse okay um i try to tell people like envision a, a pressure knob okay and it's yeah. like a volume control and the minute you let go of that knob it should spring back to zero and uh and so then the next time you start you start it you know from zero it doesn't shouldn't stick at 75 or 100 and then the next time even if the horse only needs a two in pressure you give him 75. that's a way to dull a horse or to get a horse all worried worked up so that's how i like to think how i like to think about it your your pressure should the pressure you apply or your pressure knob should be spring-loaded to go back to zero all the time. So if you watch like and you've got to be conscious of where you're where you're where the flag is and, like see how it's, it's behind him and, and him just lifting it off this the sand there a little bit is is pressure. They notice all that kind of stuff. So. Come on. So yeah, he's trying to get his yeah. yeah. He's trying to get his hind end to move and not move the whole horse away. But so he walked off. Waiting for so him to commit to a spot. That's where his attention is. Somewhere outside, which is normal. This is all normal. This is all real normal. Well, he's got a nice trot. Pretty trot, you know. Look at that. That's pretty. That's real pretty. See now, Eric's over here just standing there like that. See, I try to draw him in. And this is if you don't do this, these steps here, they'll, manif they'll manifest themselves in all sorts of things yeah. further down in the training. So, you know, getting the hook on and I call it like getting some buy in from them, getting them to bond Good to you. Come on. Uh, you know, a lot of it's relational sort of stuff. Hey. If you can get that, you'll get a horse that will just do so much better in the training. So that's what we, we try to do. Oh. You know, you work on the relational stuff. I mean, and, You'll be chasing them off a little bit and moving around. That's how what horses understand, okay? They understand that. And uh, that's what another horse will do to them. So it makes total sense to them. So it's not like you're trying to, you know, create a new language room. Now, are you holding his, his head like that? Why are you holding his head like well, that? Well, because he's... He's wanting to just keep giving me two eyes. I'm trying to get him to stay on me, me stay on his right side. Okay. I'm trying to encourage him to go forward. There we go. See, he wants to look at me with both eyes. Good. Good. There we go. Now see, he got he panicked. <clears throat> see. Even though it wasn't extreme. Yeah, that was just too much for him. It's, it's right. Simple. 
And that, but that's what's nice about doing it at Liberty too, you know? Yeah. You can kind of see where they are. Ducks over here, so he's calling. And that clucking like that, he starts this from the very beginning and eventually that'll mean, mean move something, do something. And how he builds that is, you know, gets in the move and then there's release. And horses are always trying to look for that. And so what he'll do with this clucking like this is if he's trying to do like in the future here, trying to do a subtle movement, like say for instance, he's going to a gate and the horse just has to move just a hair or you might, instead of putting leg, you might just cluck like once you know and that'll get them to just take one step or something they kind of learned it they learned it see watch this side yeah well now he's there he goes he's really nice Lost work. I like this guy Cool. See, so that that's how that little touch on the forehead and the swipe like that. That's letting them know it's okay, you know. And that little thing like that helps helps soothe them and helps them realize that okay. Well, you know, he's, he's not mad at me or anything, or he doesn't want me to stay away. You know, you kind of. You kind of have to work both at the same time. You have to get them to go away and you have to get them to be able to draw in. And you're always going to be working. If you have too much draw, they're going to be all over you, you know, and not and not wanting to move too much away. They're going to probably be scared and you're not going to be able to catch them and they're going to be just, you know, you don't want that either. Yeah, I like this start at Liberty like this. It's really cool. There we go. He's doing well. Horses are so cool. They're such sweet animals. They really are. See? So, he, see, because he was moving his hind end a little bit. So he just rubs him on the forehead, tells him it's okay. Now he's going to do this to let him know that these tools aren't anything to be worried about. You know? Yeah, he's clucking just a little bit, so I'm just trying to tell him, hey, you gotta move something. Yeah. But if you notice how he's just moving slow and easy, and he's not like, he's not pussyfooting around him or, you know, but he's, he's being slow and deliberate, you know. You don't want to get him all worked up, there's no point in it. It doesn't help the training or anything. Yeah, he's gonna look out his ears at him, see? Yeah. Look at that, paying attention to him, see? That was his right ear. You gotta, when you start training and riding horses, you really wanna pay attention to where their ears are. 
it's kind of cool I did this I saw this one guy he's a trainer out of the UK and he was sitting on one of his horses and horse's ears were forward and I was looking at the camera right and so he said okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slightly put my right leg onto the horse ever so slightly and watch his ears so he did that so he put his leg just ever so slightly on the right side and that yeah. right ear came back and looked at him and he released then he did it again and then he released then he did the left side and the horse's left ear went back and listened to him and then he released and uh, he said this is how sensitive they are you know and so he said the horse's attention was coming on him like that and I'm sure you've seen people riding horses where they're kicking them and spurring them and doing all this stuff and they've created a dead dead horse and uh, and all that comes down to is is if you really had to boil it down to it, it's like not getting your timing down not releasing not getting your timing down like when you release like releasing at the wrong time or instead of going through a process of cues they just go jump to the right the harshest cue which might be spurs or something like that and that's why you see that kind of stuff uh, now, depending on who's who's riding the horse, you know, if you're a beginner, you probably don't want a super sensitive horse that has like feather light buttons and stuff like that. But what I found is you can train them that way, where they're they're pretty much real light. And when someone else gets on that's a beginner and isn't as light, the horse just kind of picks up on it, you know. Yeah. And uh, like people say, oh, they ruined them or something. Unless it's some sort of abuse or something like that, some really traumatic thing. They haven't ruined them. Because you, you, you can put a good good rider right back on them, and within just a few minutes, that, that horse will be responding, right? Because they just, they just know. They just learn to ignore cues that don't mean anything or that aren't rewarded. And uh, so it's interesting like that, you know. Yeah, he's a he's a nice horse. He's built like a little Clydesdale, huh? <laughs> That's what Kevin was saying. He's behind me. Kevin's behind me. So he looks like a little Clydesdale or a little draft horse or something. He's a pretty thing. Oh yeah, I forgot to say this guy's name is Stetson. Should people subscribe? They should. <laughs> hey, smash that like button and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.